The Wall Street Journal seems surprised that multiple world leaders from Latin American countries would spar with one another, but here we are. And in a new amusing piece, the publication points to some hilarious taunts that are taking place among leaders of Latin American countries. So the piece is titled, Ignoramus Fascist Small Penis Club. Latin diplomacy devolves into schoolyard taunts. Okay, the real twist in the story is that I'm in favor of it. I'll explain why. In a I mean, it's a, it's amusing. So I guess I'm in favor of it too. I have a second reason. So let's get to some of the specifics that were noted in the piece. Um, the article published this morning is a compilation of the most vicious insults that Latin American leaders have recently thrown at each other. Uh, many were said by the ultra right wing president of Argentina, Javier Malay. Let's give you some examples. Recently, Malay was asked about Andre Manuel Obrador, Lopez Obrador, that's the leader of Mexico, of course, who has repeatedly and openly criticized Malay. After the first round of the presidential elections, Obrador described Malay as a conservative fascist. And after his victory in the second round, he said that the Argentine people had scored an own goal. Now, Malay's response was to call Obrador, among other things, an ignoramus, fun word. Obrador's response was to once again insist that he's a fascist. The Wall Street Journal also notes that in the past, Malay has called Obrador's supporters, so the actual voters, quote, the small penises club. I mean, that just screams competent world leader, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Malay has feuded with other leaders as well. Uh, he lashed out at leftist opponents in Argentina as useless parasites and human excrement. That's not fun. Uh, these spats aren't just limited to Argentina either. Last uh, year, Gustavo Petro of Colombia and Lula da Silva of Brazil spoke out after Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela blocked opposition figures from opposing him in the country's presidential election. Here's how Venezuela's foreign minister responded, quote, shove your opinions wherever you can fit them. Mm. So tell me why you like this, Jenk. This okay. is dysfunction, no? No, I don't think so. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's gonna make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you, thank you. Anna's right, it is funny. <laughs> I'm not missing the humor of it. And I'm not missing that it sounds childish, right? But what's the alternative? So let's talk about America first, then we'll go to the international stage. In my lifetime in America, there's been, uh, you know, really one camp, and then and me. <laughs> now my camp is a lot larger uh, than when we started. But so the other camp, a major camp, is be civil. Don't ever say anything rude about people in power, right? So that this is the NPR camp. Shh. That what that hasn't really been the case though, Jenk. I mean, maybe they didn't. Maybe US politicians didn't go around accusing other world leaders of having small penises or whatever, right? But they've definitely attacked other world leaders they didn't like. No, no, I mean in the national context. That's why I said I'm gonna separate out US then get to international. Yeah, but we're not talking about a national context. We're talking about leaders of different countries, no? Yeah, I got you, but so, but let me finish. So in the national context, that civility has been a trick to get us to be okay with corruption, etc. Okay, so if you call out politicians as corrupt, especially the ones that are on your side in your party, that was the most uncivil, horrible, you know, crime against etiquette that you could possibly have in America, and it led us down a path of massive corruption and corporate rule. So the fact that that broke down in America created a lot of madness and a lot of chaos, but. We finally have people talking about corruption, both on the left wing and the right wing. So Anna, I'm using it as an example, right? So for the first time, some people on the left wing and the right wing in America are like, hey, maybe APAC is leading to corruption, that they seem to be financing a lot of these politicians, and then the politicians seem to be doing what they want. Oh, Wait a minute, that's also true of Pfizer and ExxonMobil and all these companies. Before that stuff was never ever said, in polite company, which is all of TV, all of media, 
all of politics. Now that that's beginning to break down, you have the bad guys that are springing out, like the leader of Argentina. Yeah, I mean, you, you're a child, right? Ha ha, I don't like you, you're a smell of excrement, and well, that's the other guy, but you have a small penis, etc. right? I got you. On the other hand, at least we're beginning to call each other out on the things that we're doing wrong. It's extending that analogy. Well, it hasn't gotten to a place where it could be productive yet. So for example, if order started to break down so much, that Western democracies were allowed to criticize Israel, that would be a huge step in the right direction. We've only gotten the bad side here, and that's the same thing happened here in America. Chaos ensued after Trump, and that was the bad side. And if you looked at it, you go, oh, that's terrible. But then some positive things started to happen. So I think that us being, or the leaders of different countries beginning to be more honest and more less civil with each other, I think can actually end in things being a little bit better, not worse. Because they're so walking on eggshells, it's not just about Israel, guys. On eggshells about Saudi Arabia. Oh, well, we have to be diplomatic about the butcher in Riyadh, and we have to be diplomatic about this and diplomatic about that. And there's good reasons to be diplomatic, to avoid war, etc. But but it led to the powerful basically just protecting themselves. And now that they've had a starting to scuffle within the powerful, I think that might ultimately be a good thing. I don't agree with your point. I think that you're God too bless. like your point is too US centric. You're too okay. you're too burnt out on US politicians protecting cover for one another mm -hmm. for within the context of the United States. And look, for the most part, this the taunts that we're talking about and the taunts that are covered in the Wall Street Journal are not leading to any positive developments on the on the global stage with not an exception, yet. not yet, but with one exception. So I love that Lula da Silva came out and, and spoke out against the anti-democratic actions that are being taken in Venezuela. See? Because remember, you know, da Silva, Lula, that's how, that's how we call him, right? Lula is also a socialist, right? And the right wing here in America likes to make generalizations about all socialists as if all of them are like, you know, would result in what we're seeing in Venezuela, right? The anti democratic garbage that's currently taking place in Venezuela should be called out, and it should be called out by other world leaders who value socialism. Totally. So, so I agree with you in that there are potentially positive, there's a po potentially positive impact of speaking out like this. A lot of the taunts, though, are not helpful. Uh, you know, calling supporters of the political party you don't like, you know, the small penis club or whatever Malay said, not helpful. But there are certain substantive things that can be said, which I agree could be helpful and could develop, um, you know, better policies in the future. Yeah, Lula is a, a really good example, but there could be a lot more. And remember, in the old days when no one was criticizing back and forth and insulting back and forth, when Lula did it, if he, in that case he happened to be doing it against Venezuela, which I don't think it's even fair to call it left wing. It's more of a dictatorial government at this point in Venezuela. But if he did it against a right wing government, all of the other forces, especially in the Americas led by America, United States, would then gang up on Lula and go, "Oh, you are uncivil! I cannot believe you said that!" Right? Mm -hmm. And there was a certain groupthink that you had to abide by, and groupthink is breaking down in the midst of these food fights. And I think groupthink is a bigger problem than the food fight. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely see the groupthink as a huge problem within the context of the United States, uh, but. The US, in my experience, has never really held back from criticizing other governments, especially if it's other governments that they're eyeing a potential military conflict with. Oh, definitely, yeah, and I don't want people to mistake what I'm saying. Anna's 100% right about that. Before, it was groupthink into groups, right? So the US group would lie about anyone that they was trying to control the resources of their country on behalf of their own people. Oh, they'd be like, oh, communist, socialist. Terrible, let's see how oh, people should do a coup, hurry up. That son of a bitch doesn't want to sell bananas for, for uh, less money to Dole, which is a com company that owns the US. Whoops, whoops. Yeah. Right? Oh, Iran's democratically elected government. Uh, it doesn't actually wants to control its own oil, with its own natural resource. That's it, do a coup against that son of a bitch. So the US and the democracies did a lot of wonderful things. And obviously, I love democracy and I want democracy, but I want it to be real. And 
and the group thing that came from the capitalist excesses in the US, which I would call corporatism, is what led to the problems and us being hypocritical. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.